Well, I've just picked up this Bio Sound Sentry from uh, a local seller on Facebook, and uh, I'm going to see if I can get it working. Cosmetically, it's in really nice condition. It just needs a bit of a clean up. So that'd be the first point of order. I mean, it's dusty around the back, as you can see. It just needs a bit of a clean up. It's the newer type with the uh, stainless steel clamper rather than the black clamper, which I think is ever so slightly more desirable. I think it's also got the CDM12 laser in it which is uh, an up and down one rather than an arc, like the earlier ones. Either way, the CD doesn't work, so we're gonna have to spend some time looking into that. It's also in black, so it's not really gonna divide any opinions. It's not got one of them cool standy out colors that make them pop, but it's also, it's not gonna cause any arguments either. So either way, let's have a go, let's see if I can fix it. <laughs> about these because they were probably the uh, well they were the, the cheap thing to buy back in the day like a kitchen setup or something like that and um, today they've started commanding reasonable prices I mean when you compare it to like the 8500 bio center that I did before these things are commanding uh, almost similar money and we'll have a look at some of the inputs and outputs and stuff and see what we've got as an option not much to speak of around the back. There seems to be an AM aerial and an auxiliary in, and that's all we've got. Not a lot to speak of. Let's see if it does anything then. There we go, got the door to open. Not quite got the knack of that yet, where it's asking me to put it. And I can see, first of all, let's try the CD. Now, this has got the, the linear tracker, so it's a CD12. Phillips. Door goes up and down nice and smoothly. That's good. And maybe I have to press CD for it to work. Okay, so it spins, but then nothing. So there's obviously something that needs to look at with the CD player. Obviously something needs fixing there. Have we got any radio? Obviously I won't be able to play this for very long because of YouTube licensing. I wanted to get this right. Profits at one of the world's largest What's oil companies, you? Saudi Aramco, fell sharp. Yeah, we've got radio. Do we have tape? Okay, I'm not going to be able to play very much of this because otherwise it will trigger. And I've chosen a live album just to just to help. Yep, yeah, we've got tape. I suspect that that head might need some cleaning because they are apparently, I imagine sat there, they're quite vulnerable to getting dirty. It looks like it's a self-changing head as well, so it looks like it will go both ways. It's closing on me. Perfect. Now we also have an aux lead that goes into the back and I have tried that and it does work, but obviously I can't film it and play it at the same time, so I'm doing it on my phone. So overall, it looks like it all works apart from the CD. So I think my next thing to do would be to tear it apart. And since these CD units are so cheap to buy as one whole piece, the CDM12s, I'm gonna go and find the right CDM12 to fit inside this unit. So let me open it up and then we'll make sure we've got the right one. I bought this CDM 12.4 laser module and on the uh, strip, on the ribbon, it says EF20A and that's the one you're looking for. By the magic of editing, I'm able to show you the old one uh, from the unit. So don't worry that it's on carpet. I've not stuck the new one down on carpet. It's a TDA1302. So that's what the chip should say. Uh, you may also see them as a VAM1202, I believe. But I searched for CDM 12.4 to find mine. And I used a UK supplier because, well, I didn't want it to take four months for it to arrive. I wanted it in a couple of days. So I had to pay a little bit more. But I think it's worth it.
First step is to remove the glass just to prevent you from breaking it. You just wiggle it and you just pull it and it comes free eventually. Put it somewhere safe for later. Next I use a T10 to remove these four screws that I'm pointing at. It's the next stage. Once you remove those, flip it over and it will allow you to gently pull uh, the speaker frets outwards pull up and pull outwards and they will just come free they don't require a lot of force so if you just work them off and they will just pop off like so and inside you see all the electronics there's some ideas what the clips look like just so you know of course do the other side that's important you need both sides to be off Take the other side off as well and pull it to the side and it will reveal all the in, inside electronics. So the next step is to remove these four screws here. And that will remove that uh, CD flap part. You have to pull it up and twist it around like this very carefully and it will just pull out. These tabs you push in here and same for the top, and that will remove this cover quite easy. Just push them in and it will pull off. Hard to do with one hand, but quite easy to remove. There we go. Then there's these two springs. I used a pick to remove these. So I found that's the easiest way. And remove them from the top. They might ping off, so just be aware that uh, to, you might need to rescue them. Just watch where they go. I found this is the easy way, easiest way of accessing the mechanism. You have to remove this plate. So that's the, I found to be the easiest way. Okay, there's some connections to remove. Just carefully pull those. There's two on one side and one on the other. And once you've got them off, you've got the board free. You can take that to work on. Make a cup of tea at this stage because uh, now is not the time for a beer because this next bit's rather fiddly. Okay, so remove these four torques here and that will be able to lift this part of the board up. You want to unscrew these torques on this white plastic piece. Unscrew the retaining tabs here. And do the one at the top. I slightly went in the wrong order here and I got it out and got it back in. It didn't really matter too much. You may find that you uh, will need to fiddle around in your ordering a little bit as you do this. But as long as you get it in and out, it doesn't matter too much. I removed the front as I found it was easier to access the laser mechanism by removing this plastic cover from the front, which requires a smaller Torx bit. At this stage I got it all out, so I was happy with that and could replace a new unit in. I needed to remove this bar as well to be able to access uh, the laser and put it back in and on the track. So do take careful note before you take yours apart. It rests on the top of this from underneath. Take careful note of how it goes together. Okay, time to reassemble it. I put it all back together again and put it back into the unit. First thing I did is just set the springs up and carefully reattach them with a pick. It's best if you set them on there first and then use the pick to reattach them. It's really difficult to do with one hand holding a phone. So uh, bear with me trying to attach it. Much easier if you can use two, two hands to do it. Just like so. Ooh, there we go, it's on. There we go. Oh, nearly. That's got it. Phew. Difficult. I attached the other one on, and then I'll put this plastic clip and this plastic cover back on. There we go. Sorry about my nails. I'm a guitar player, so they end up growing. Good time to check that belt whilst you're in there. Put this back in. Again, twist it in the same way and make sure it locates back in the track. Okay, now time to test it. Will it work? Before I put the cover back on, I think it makes sense just to put a CD in. 
And I won't play it for very long because it will trigger the YouTube uh, security stuff. So just a quick snippet of audio. See if it works. We did. Success. Well done. Excellent. I'm quite happy with that. There's the door mechanism working without the glass on. That's perfect. Skip through. And it does work. The CD is spinning. Excellent. So I reassembled it. Okay, so I've had a bit of a time now to just play with the unit, see how it sounds, and uh, have a bit of fun with it. Um, if you're here to see how it's being fixed, then I've done that now. That's out of the way. Um, if you're not sure and you want any, you know, you've got any questions on that, do feel free to leave a comment and ask. Um, I'd be happy to answer it and see if you give me help. But uh, to say that I'm not an electrical engineer and uh, I'm not massively talented in that department. I'm just a hobbyist. And I managed to replace that part pretty easily. It's just the only bit that's a bit fiddly is replacing the laser. You just have to make sure you don't touch the lens, basically, is the main, is the main golden rule. So if, as long as you do it carefully and methodically, I managed to do most of it with one hand. So it's really not that difficult at all. And one hand holding a phone. So yeah, it's very possible, even for teenagers. With, uh, we've got a hand permanently glued to a phone. They can do it as well, if that's the case. Okay, so let's talk about user experience a little bit. Talk a bit about the sound, what to do with this thing. Okay, so the uh, first thing, I've not quite got the knack of this yet, but opening the front, um, it's just fun, isn't it? It's a nice little uh, bit of user experience. And Bang & Olsen are masters of that, even going back to things like uh, this Beer Master 8000. It's just nice, look at that, beautiful. And it just works well. I've not quite got the knack of opening this yet, so it might not do it first time. Oh, I've done it. Maybe I have got the knack um, now. Seems to have worked. So obviously, uh, the user experience is things like these buttons. They only light up the relevant buttons that you want at the time. So if it's not something that's relevant, it's not lit up. And there you go. Other buttons have lit up now. That works. It just change, allows you to change the buttons that light up as you go along, which is just neat. It's just fun, isn't it? It's just one of them user experience things that Bang & Olsen are so good at getting right. This is a, a later model, but the um, main difference is the CD mechanism and you get a brushed uh, stainless steel cover on there, which does add a little bit of bling, especially to a black speaker fret model. Having that bit of bling in there, I think, does lift it considerably. So that's quite nice. I mean, I did... Uh, when buying this Bang & Olsen stuff, I basically, I, I choose it very carefully in that what is locally available to me for a reasonable price, pretty much I'll buy it. Um, if it's something I think I can fix that and have a bit of fun, I'll buy it. So I'll talk a bit about the sound and how to use it. Bear in mind, if you do buy one of these, you'll need to have a foot for it to sit on or a wall hanger. So if you buy one and it comes with one of those two things, that's a bit of a bonus. They're quite expensive to buy for some reason for a bit of plastic or a metal bracket to sit on the wall. So they are a bonus if you can get hold of one of those. They don't freestand brilliantly. This is a portable device, but it's portable as in that, you know, you could take it from room to room. Maybe you could take it into the garden it's not portable, stick it on your shoulder and walk around town. It's not portable as in take it camping. You know, it's uh, glass, it's quite heavy, it's 10 kilos, with a glass front on it. So it's not portable like a Bluetooth speaker's portable. It's more something for moving around the house if you want to. Generally, I think most people stick this in a room and leave it there 90% of the time. I might consider moving it in and out into the garden and using it in a nice day, maybe. Uh, but not sure. With the sound, okay, that's the important bit, isn't it, really? It sounds very nice. It's by far the best all-in-one CD kind of speaker system that I've heard. The one issue is if you don't like the speakers, you're kind of stuck with what you've got here. You can't, like, add an auxiliary, auxiliary speakers in. It's it's That is what you've got. It is what it is. So... That's something to maybe think about. Um, 
Sound-wise, I mean, I think they're not. A, it's not a million miles away from something like that. There's not thumping great bass, but uh, you know you've got the same similar kind of drivers. Um, obviously, this has only got one, so it's almost like that. That pairing there, it's got one sort of four-inch-ish uh, driver and one tweeter for left, and the same thing for right as well. This is also ported, so that gives you a slightly different sound to an enclosed speaker like that. Um, but it's very nice, pleasing sound, surprising uh, amount of stereo separation for something that's uh, all together in one unit. It's not too bad. Um, the only criticism I have is really the low end. Um, it doesn't have massive thumping bass, but it's quite muddy at the, at the lower mids. I think they've tried to compensate for not having a, a big driver by essentially putting too much weight into the lower mids. So when I'm using mine, I tend to back the bass off one and notch the treble up. And it's important to think it might actually sound different mounted on a wall. You might be able to get away, you know, the bass might actually come through a bit better. You might be able to get away with having less bass driving into them speakers, you know, really pumping. You might be able to get away with less of it. The unit will work with these type of remote controls, so B-Link 1000s, that type of thing, or a BO4. So if you've got one of those lying around, that will work. Um, this one's not really batteries in it, so I don't use this. So I don't think this will actually do anything. So I don't think, no, no batteries. To try and keep the terminals fresh, I'll leave them generally kind of, uh, but there you go. I press CD and hopefully it'll work. There we go, it's spinning up. So, you can see it works. The volume goes up and down, perfect, you can turn it off or with the remote control. So that works, it's brilliant. Okay, so some final kind of conclusions really. If you want a small, portable uh, system that you can move from room to room that looks really nice, these are great. Um, I'd personally look for one with the shiny stainless steel clamper. I think it really does lift it. If you can't get that, then some coloured frets, again, would be a bit more exciting. I think all black might look a bit dull, but I'm not seeing one like that, uh, so I'm not quite sure. Might look a bit plain. Don't underestimate the power of the looks with Bang & Olsen. I mean, a lot of uh, high fine shadows um, kind of mock Bang & Olsen slightly because of the looks. They think it's all style over substance. But user experience and looks are an important part of uh, operating things. you Just the same way that when you eat food, if it, if it looks not very nice, then you're not going to enjoy it as much as if it looks beautifully presented. And I think uh, you use your other senses when uh, using anything, hi-fi included, uh, including your ears. You also use other senses, touch, you use uh, looks. So that's something I always, you know, it's one thing that I enjoy. I sometimes just walk in this room, stick my head around the door just to look at this stuff and think that's really very, very nice. It's very good. Um, so that's it really. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully I've helped you fix yours if it's something that you've been doing or help you, if you encourage you to buy one of these if you think it's the right kind of thing for you. And uh, like and subscribe and I'll, try and buy more bits locally to fix soon. Thank you.